I'm going to give you a choice. AJ1s or AF1s? The Jordan Damn. ones or the Air Force ones? Bro, so you going to ask me that and I really collect shoes, man? Uh, yeah, I know. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> I got to go F01. F01 for sure, especially like 2006, 2008. Untouchable. Oh, yeah, for sure. 2006, 2008, F01s, untouchable. Jordan ones, only, the reason why I didn't pick the Jordan ones is because I, I like the old, I like the retro Jordan ones. Mm -hmm. I like the 85s. Right. You know what I mean? The originals. And you can't really find them. I got five pair though, but you can't really find them nowhere. That's why you I can't find like them, because you got them all. Yeah, I got them all. Every time I catch a pair, I'm buying it. So let me ask you a question. How do you get into collecting shoes? Obviously, we, you grew up in the era. I mean, I grew up in the era where Michael Jordan burst onto the scene and to get those shoes. But we weren't, didn't have the wherewithal to think, like, we got the shoes, we wore them. We ain't get the shoes. We ain't have no money, first of all, to get one to rock, one to stop. Yeah. $100, that's a lot of money back in the 80s when I was growing up. $100 back a lot in my time. My mama, <laughs> tell you the truth, my mama ain't buy me no Jordan. Right. It was too high. So I had to get old enough and get to trade my Air Maxes in, you know, in school, get to trade my Air Maxes uh, for, for, for some J's or right. do it like that. So that's what made me get into it because the same thing you said, I couldn't really, I couldn't, my mama didn't didn't have the money to just be, she, we was on limit, three boys, a long time. It was just my mama before she met her husband. You know what I mean? So right. we, I didn't have the opportunity to get no J's. I remember the two for uh, 89, 99, for one. And that was like the lottery for me, black and white, every school year. Yeah. That was automatic. Yeah, one, you could be $40 a pair. Fought it. So I said two, two for 89, special. We're going to go white, we're going to go black. And white going to get one on special occasion. But yeah. And then at my school, though, I ain't going to lie, though. At my school, the night, by the time I got about ninth grade, you know, everybody started feeling themselves. Yeah. If you came in my school with, like, fake J's, it was like a known thing. In my school, Burkman High School, you coming up with some fake J's, it's kind of was sad because everybody knew the protocol. You know, in the morning time, cafeteria, breakfast time, you know, you coming in. You got to come in with you your gotta gear. Come you got to be you right, come man. in with them, it's like a protocol. People that don't know you, your homeboys, whoever, them folks going to put, they going to sit on the arm, um, sit at the table and lift their feet up and point at your shoe. So it was an embarrassment thing. So you had to be right stepping. You couldn't come with them fake, them food gazes. When did you start collecting shoes? When did you say, you know what? I'm gonna be a sneaker. I'm gonna become a sneakerhead. When did you start? And do you wear all, do you wear your shoes? By 11th grade, when I was able to finesse and do stuff to get shoes, probably okay. like 11th grade. And if you go look at my old pictures, like I was having Olympic sixes on. You know what I mean? I always was having, I was having the Jays in the polo era when we used to wear cargos and polos and American Eagle and all that was in. You had to have the Jays. So about 11th grade. Cause like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't, from from middle school on up, it was it was the same routine. At four one, when how many pairs of shoes do you think you have? Probably about like six thousand fifty five. Six thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you got your? Do you have a, a damn a room, a house, your a house for your shoes? I got multiple walls, and I got houses. I got a house in New York, here in LA, and in Atlanta. So they spread it out. In East Coast. What's your favorite shoe to collect? I gotta say, Air Force Ones, bro. Cause it's more, it's more. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Cause it's more, it's more selections. It's like, it was a lot of collabs done with them back then. And the leather on the Air Force One from 2006, 2008 is just a little different. Right. But my favorite Jordan is Jordan 16s and the fours. But the fours you can get, but the 16s, they always rip. Like my gingers, I got like seven pair. Every time I wear them one time, they coming out, they, 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 they rip because they old. Right. So what's the, what's the most expensive pair of sneakers that you own? Marty McFly's. They're like a hundred thousand, but I didn't pay that though. Do you want the Air Max? Yeah, Air Max. The old ones, the ones that, well, I got the one that's yeah, come on. They, 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 they tie for real and yeah. they blow up and both of my shoes work and they put up somewhere on ice. You but ain't going to wear them? I, I pay, I wore them, I wore them too. I wear all my shoes. Yeah. I wear all my shoes. I believe you ain't no shoe collector if you don't wear the shoes. I don't, I don't respect So you ain't gonna try to get up off them then? Nah, never. And I call them for the sweet 25,000. You call them, what? Call them for 25. Dude here in LA, at so stage, I think, he needed the money and I had it. <laughs> <laughs> I got the money you need. So what's the one thing that you bought, purchased in your life that you like, man, I should have left that alone. I can say what I, it's not a specific purchase. It's just like, I gave a lot of money away. 
like family, friends, loved ones, family, or just specific, family, friends. But I don't regret it though, because at the end of the day, my folks needed help. But like now, I'm getting older. Like I'm like, now I should. You hold that money a little tighter. You ain't yeah. as hey, because you know they they figure you got like a hey, offset. Let your boy hold five. And you're like, all right, shit, no I problem. I was green at one point. I was just giving that shit away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then it, did, it, did, it, did, it got to the point where, like, you know, you get to start seeing your real folks when that happened, though. You get to see who your real And because when you don't give it to them, now all of a sudden they say you acting exactly. funny. You don't give it to them. It's now you hearing the story, man. Bro, over there was saying you be a crab and body gave you all this and this and this and that. But I'm a crab now. Yeah. I'm supposed to be, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't look that. That disappeared. And then then I got real friends over. I don't want to get it, Mr. Strew. Like, a lot of my boys from like 17 years ago, we've been, we've been, we've been right. friends. It be the folks that come like that you meet through through time and right. see you and they become your boy and now they part of the crew and stuff like that and then it be them to be like because my real homies would be like um they won't even ask they won't, I, they I have to ask them i because you know your family your brother you can see it like on you like you all right you, you good right and, and even if they say yeah, i'm cool you, you know, know they're cool. not good you know they're not good you know what i'm saying you know it so i'm thankful to have that them type of people i got a lot of people like that too and i got homies that'll be like hey start giving that nigga some money Stop giving him money to another bro, like to another homie, like, hey man, stop doing that. So, I'm good. My, I got, got good, I got a good circle. I always tell people all the time, you got to put limits on what you give because takers will never put limits on what they take. Exactly. <laughs> so free, three ninety nine. <laughs> you a big fashion guy. When did you When did you get into fashion? Have you always been into fashion? I always been into it. Um, you that Green Bar Mall, huh? Nah, I was, I, was, I was in Gwinnett Place. Yeah. Oh, you didn't go to the know. I was at Gwinnett Place. Okay. You know what I mean? When the polos was in. Right. I used to risk my life for now I don't think about it. I used to risk my life just to be fresh. I'd have been chased out the mall, still out of Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get caught though. But I was I, I, but but couldn't afford certain stuff. Like when the Levi Way was in a long, long, long time ago, and then I, I would go up to the Macy's store and be like, I'll be trying them on. I got two, three of them on, but one day they caught on. And then. So you take off with them on? I take off with them on. Get up out of there. <laughs> Play up out of there. Down the escalator. That's what killed them. He come right. I went down the escalator the opposite way. Great. And then, you know, another black brother helped me out though. He was working at, um, I think it was Honda. Cause you know, by a mall, it's a dealership by. Mm -hmm. And I was just running through, but I lied to him. I told him I was getting jumped. I'm like, man, I'm getting jumped. I need to use your phone, and then I call my homeboy to come pick me up. But yeah, I used to risk my life to try to get it if I ain't, if I ain't, we ain't had no money. Cause I felt like, you know, in school when you're young, you being fly, the only thing you really got. Right. Unless you like a super athlete in sports. So was the flyness just because of you, or you was trying to attract the honey? I was trying to attract the honey. And it was cause, <laughs> it was cause of me too, though. I just wanted to be fly, you know what I mean? But I was, though. The honey like that. They like they like the gear that you had on. Yeah, I was having it on. See, if my senior, year, I got on Gucci and I went best dressed. So okay. I'm saying in high school. Oh, you want best dressed? Oh, I'm having pattern. Yeah, I'm having pattern by the drip now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that ain't just come. When I got the money. So, so, what's your favorite? What's your so you going out? Yeah, you. I'm not talking about to the Oscars or to the Grammys. You just going out. What's the gear? I'm gonna throw on a little. See, I'm mixing it up, so I might go. A little Rick on you, but older Rick though. Okay. And then I'm gonna go Margella on you because I feel like ain't nobody really wearing the Margella in my league. They don't mm -hmm. really get it. The right. language they don't speak that language. Um. And I like a lot of and the thing with me with clothes, I like my clothes. The cut is more important than the actual designer who's making it. You know what I mean? Okay. It got it how I fit my body, and how I, it, how I put it on. Mm -hmm. it, it matters. I'm gonna go belt, but sometimes I might go double belt outside the loops. I'm giving these keys now. When now y'all remember this, because okay. you gonna see it now that I done said it. Right. But yeah, and I'm inspired by Mike too. So I might go. Some days I might go blue jeans, and when I sit down, you can see the white sock on purpose. Like I got on Rick on right now, you know. Right. So I'ma just I'ma just play around with it. I'ma play around. I ain't gonna never I ain't gonna never go mannequin. I feel like a lot of people go mannequin. They go I'ma go Gucci and I'ma go Gucci Gucci Gucci. I'ma go Balenciaga and I'ma wear it all the way down. I really don't do that. I like to switch it up. So you could kind of like, cause in the fashion world, people pay attention to what we call pieces. So you want to always have a piece on, which means it's like a, it's like a, a rare, a rare piece from the brand or okay. 
something that everybody don't got that they want it though, but everybody want it. You know what I mean? Well, if it's not, if you say pieces, but if you ain't got the ensemble on, how do you make it flow? So how do you put Balenciaga with LV? How do you put, you know, uh, I mean, with, uh, uh, uh Gucci? So how do you make right it? Away, Cause you gotta run away from the prince. You okay. know what I mean? Like, as a fly person, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from the prince. I don't want to, I don't want you to really know this is that. You got to really know it. When you walk past me, you got to be into fashion to know. Oh, to no, know what you got, got on. Margello, he got, he got JW Anderson t-shirt on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause the out loud to me, that's country. Like, I ain't gonna never wear like the Gucci G print or the Louis V Jeep all the way printed up top and bottom yeah. outfit. But you will wear a piece. Okay. It might be a Louis jacket or a shirt or something. Yeah. But you're not gonna have the Louis pants or the Gucci pants to, to match that nah, top to bottom. Oh, man. That's mannequin. Okay. We okay. That's we, what can't, we can't be in there looking like the little statue. <laughs> we can't do that. So, but so if you were to put a piece together, you know, like, okay, you got some jeans on. Yeah. But, and you got the Balenciaga, uh, the hoodie. So that's. How, what would you what would you classify as this? This is a casual look. This casual, man. You know, this is this casual, but it's still stepping because the brands is what it is. Like, I got right. Chrome, I got a Balenciaga, and um, the way it fits me right. in particular, it looks better than the, if it fit somebody else. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button, where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.